Um, I taught all my kids. We had four kids. We had two boys and two girls. And um, Dirk was the first one. And um, uh, what I did first, when they learned the piano first and to, to sort of get a basic of the music. And because I had heard from somebody else that, well, if, they, if you teach them piano, you know, they got good grounding for the music and things like that. So that's what we did with the children. No, no. <coughs> no You're not no. right. Because you... The kids went to Mrs. Glass for piano, yeah. and then I the have boys, carried, yeah. the boys have carried them in the car, to, oh, yeah. took her a pay, yeah. and Rowan did it for a bit. Now Chris has done it, and I know you were at home teaching them, and that is very important to be the teacher at home, but quite often they got their first initial well, yeah, you're right, notes you're, there, yeah. and then yeah. after a few years you took over. Yeah. Okay, now you. <laughs> Okay, so that was the case, and then Job is right there, and, um, and Wilfred, they did play in a band, uh, Wilfred did gave up in the end, he wanted to play change over to guitar, so we did that, and then, but Dirk stayed a bit longer, and he was actually even in the 40th, uh, on the photos in the 40th anniversary, when the band had a 40th anniversary, and then Dirk left a couple of years after that. Um, by the time the girls came, Anke and Sonja, um, they were sort of about the same time. Um, they had actually a lot of tutoration from Jack Brooks. Jack Brooks took uh, on a lot of learners yeah, too, hey, at that time. Yeah. And uh, I probably, being your own children, you sometimes get too impatient with them. So they, you know, <laughs> so they went to somebody else. And um, uh, and it has been has been great, really, because the girls did spend longer in the in the band. And we even they even went to solo contests and um, and I think the influence from Jack and Chris as well that was um, Jack really made from the learners we had a little groups like little ensembles, so we had uh, duets going to the solo competition like at the Bay of Plenty solos, okay. uh, and then the Tim's the Women's Institute uh, that was once a year as well. There was Frida Jack's wife was quite involved with that. And uh, through Jack, we actually uh, um, we had the band going there as well and do little competitions. And the whole band went as well for a competition. Tim's band was there. Um, you know, there were a couple of other ones there. People from all over the place came. Hey, yeah, yeah. even Auckland people um, um, came, children in. Yeah. And um, which was actually really if i look back at that it was a good time even for our family to take the kids to the band as a family thing and go to the competitions we and, regarded and the, the, the band really as our extended family yeah the, and like that joe mentioned in the, in no, not the games family the next, here ourselves. You know? the band became they were our friends yeah our kids the, you know the the hagen boys you know, when they sat in the back and the buggers were reading a book and then they talk about harry potter it was just fun to take them from Care pay back home and, and things like that. But there were other kids. There were always half a dozen yeah. kids there. Yeah, we had had it it wasn't there. just ours, but there were others yeah. too. Yeah, and with the games Peter, evenings uh, every two. Oh, Don, Don's too. boy was in it. Who was that? Peter. Oh, the, uh, Jane Buffett. Oh, ja Jane. Oh, Jane. Uh, Jane's uh, Jane, Don's wife. Um, she had um, her first. Her first husband died, and her son. Peter was oh, in Rolly it Bradley's son was in it. Rolly Bradley. Another yeah. good thing was that too, but at a time when, when talking about Rolly Bradley, every yeah. year when we started off the band again, the end of January, Rolly Bradley said, come to our place. So we always had the first practice at Rolly Bradley's place and have a barbecue afterwards. And it was for the young ones quite good too, because after they kicked the ball, they're being on the farm, you know, they had a bit of fun and have a barbecue and have a social thing. It was actually quite Quite, quite too, hey, with the, with the band. Yeah, Rosie Bradley is really an, an, an all-time character of the band as well. You now you might have heard stories from him. He, Rowley, he loved the band just like they all did, all these, but he was a farmer. He had a flat deck youth, and I don't know if you've seen in my days when I had that old Bathurst bass, that was Rowley's bass. He would always in a hurry go to band, the bass was put on the back of the yacht and bum, 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 go to the band, you know, then pick him up and play his tune, then bum, 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 go home. So that is why he got a hundred thousand little dents in it, so they reckon. But um, yeah, that was Rowley Bradley. Yeah. 
Rory Bradley is another story from him, not connected with the band, but um, he, he loved, he had a tractor and he had an, a blade on it and he had to work on it. The hydraulics of the blade gave way and he got stuck underneath the blade. He was away from home, he didn't know how to get help and he was stuck. But he had a dog and he could tell the dog to go to I'll go home to name, to what's it was Joyce. No, and, and Joyce knew when the dog came home, oh, what this and he kept on running back and Joyce came and that saved his leg. So that was oh well to me that sort of prescribes Rory, you know how he is. Mm -hmm. He was a great fishing man. But he till the end he always played in the band. When later on he shifted to um uh Coromandel and Oh, well, where did the band have to have the first play out? No, at Rowley's place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we still we went a couple of times playing yeah. there as well in Coromandel. Yeah. Yeah, we have. Um, you, you, we made lots of friends in the in the band as well because we still have contact with the Gillans and the family Brooks and and we had other family there, family Poole and uh, Maureen and Keith Poole and they have been quite involved with the band as well. The Maureen, um, she their, was like yeah, um, their daughter um, Raven, she started playing in the band and that was the first thing when they got contact with the band and um, Raven played for many years tenor horn and solo tenor horn and through Raven her sister came in and she became treasure for a while too, for a, quite a few years. And through, you know, that because we couldn't get um, band members, but it doesn't matter if we have some outsiders in as well, supporting the band. And Keith started playing the drums, the big drum, the big bass drum. And he did some little drums as well, isn't it? Yeah. Some, the yeah. side drum. So for years they, they were in, uh, Keith has been 25 years in, uh, in uh, at least 25 years. That he did. In, in the, in a, in at at one band. stage he was chairman of the band. He was been chairman but of the, the band. The best I remember the family, oh, well, I actually went to the clearing sale when they went to off the farm, but um, so I knew them from that time. But uh, he, uh, Maureen and Lynette, no, Lynette was a treasury, mum, not kids wife, oh well she was pretty fit, she's still fit, she still works in the Salvation Army sh shop, but uh, with the cattling you need collectors, mm -hmm. now that's why I mentioned collectors, now collectors is a unique breed and uh, we had to walk and it was always always Maureen and Lynette, yeah, Lynette. No, they, they were always they were there, part of it, as and, well. and from, yeah. It was sometimes just as three of us, uh, we tried to get yeah. kids, but they are harder to get. Yeah. And our own kids, by that time, I'll take them off. At first, Chris told the young ones, oh, you can help collecting. But soon, the young ones could play good enough. Oh, we need them on the truck. Yeah. So, oh, well, Dad and Maureen and, and, and uh, Lynette, no, we were the ones who did the collecting. And, yeah. But that were, it was like one big family. Yeah. Also, I must mention for Maureen and, and Lynette, they're very good um, in craft, knitting yes. and all sorts of things. And we had... Um, the prizes. <clears throat> we had every year, um, then those days, we had every year a Christmas revel, a big Christmas revel. And I was, um, Rowan organized it first. And then I took over. And uh, Lynette, and especially Maureen, she made those beautiful knitted dolls for prizes. So we had really, hey, she did yeah. a lot of, of yeah. those things too, and, and help with the stalls. In those days, we had quite often a stall as well. Oh, that was uh, one of on the, the things how I got involved with Mrs. Ryan, standing in the stall yeah, selling jam in the Tarua stall, I remember that. In the uh, Tarua Gala Day, we had stalls. Yeah. We had at the Kirpehi Easter races. Yeah. Easter Monday races we had stalls. That's where we had the first flutter in New Zealand. We put money and then they had to run a mile who got first. What? The horses? They didn't, yeah, the horses. The Kirpay races, oh, yeah. they didn't have a track. No. They went from one end to the, oh, that's just right, about yeah. up to the pub. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I mean, that was, in the, that was all in the 80s and early 90s, isn't it? But... Um, Oh, and also um, uh, this winter we try. Uh, we were overseas, but they tried to have an, um, an uh, competition night again. And uh, I remember with our kids, we had competition nights for the band 
as such. And uh, quite often, everybody, uh, Chris, in the beginning when young, the learners were young, he actually wrote out simple pieces for them. And then as adults, we've tried to do a solo as well. So we had every year, one night, a competition night. And for a couple of years, we even had uh, a couple of judges. I think Max Weaving was one yeah. year a judge as well. Yeah. yeah. And we had, oh gosh, we hope we did. We had else. Might have been one from Tim's band or something, but Lynn Edmonds or whatever. But anyway, but that was the thing as well, having. And that, the, and it's actually quite good because the kids got used to, to play for a group. When you go to the My Cat of Bay of Plenty, um, competition. At least they have played for a group, so they, you know, you get better. You don't you don't get as nervous mm -hmm. as, as that. And then we also had. And now I come back to the young ones. We had uh, every year. It was I think Morrisfield who started the top those weekends, those, those weekends, youth yeah. band weekends. Yeah. Our dear went to one in um, uh, Lake Carapiro. There was it. Uh, it is an education thing there. And, education camp uh, came there, and they uh, had uh, good musicians there. And then they learned particular music. And I still remember Dirk one time. They learned to play a march, and it was his favorite march. So we bought it for the band, and they still I can't remember the title, but it is still in the it is still in the band. And then later on, more I think it was Morrisfield. Piaco band started off having an, um, a sort of a work workshop. It's like a workshop, isn't it? Music workshops. And we even had an, um, in Kerepehi, we had a couple of times, we got Kevin Jarrett over from New Plymouth. Have you, have you ever heard of him? Mm -hmm. You have heard of him, Kevin Jarrett? Yeah. Oh, he was fantastic. He was good with the kids. And we had a, a, a weekend with him. And um, going through music and uh, little practices and learning bits and pieces and then you know there was our kids learned quite a bit from Kevin Jarrett too he yeah. always said to us too was being nervous and I told actually um, Elizabeth the other day can you remember but Elizabeth was there as well Elizabeth Pope she, she was the she, same age as Anke she started with Anke and Sonia our girls was bending and I said to can you remember what Kevin Jarrett said when uh, when you do in a competition when you go because you're very nervous and he said just let your butterflies fly <laughs> just let them fly don't hold you tight about it but let it go I said anyway and because it helps you end the what do you call it yeah, yeah. And what by the time Ra you by the time you start tell you? hey what does raven tell you no. pressure points isn't it oh, i don't know i can't remember that Oh, well, I thought you had it. Uh, okay. strong, no. But anyway, that was one of Kevin Jarrett's thing. And, uh, but another thing what yeah. you guys did is, with, I think that's when Keith was uh, president, he, um, he drove the school bus. And um, he, so that was the reason why he also go in the school bus and uh, they went to the Auckland Oh yeah. Band. With the band, we took the so, band. <laughs> Keep going. It was in the Auckland um, uh, brass band. Yeah, well, uh, we, we took what, the Continental. 19, oh, Continental. Continental. That was called Continental brass band that time. Yeah. yeah. And we um, had so a bus, next to those bus eight, going eight up. Band members. And Keith, Keith was driving at small buses. And we went, as a band, we were actually played with the Continental for one night. We went and visited them. Um, that was really fun. Hey. And oh, in well, those days, we took the kids also up. I to uh, there was a good brass band in Auckland. Remember, we had one night and we took the whole lot up. Let's oh, listen to them. Yeah. And that was the band who plays in that film. Um, uh, Brass Brand, Brand Brand off. off. Brand that off. that yeah. band came in Auckland and we took the band up who wanted to go to Auckland. It was just social things. It was great. Yeah. And one time we had when you I think of the competitions we had it two times we did it. We went as a whole to the Waikato Bay of Plenty contest in Fakatani and Gisborne. And uh, we booked a motel, remember? Mm -hmm. We booked a motel and we had rooms and then we stayed. We went as a group. The Saturdays to the, the contest as well as the Sundays. So we took a whole weekend out with the whole band. That was really, really good. I, I would love to see things like that sure. again, that we do something like that. Kate, Kate was involved with that too. And um, Kate was an RSA person. And uh, by that time, we didn't, or we knew the RSA, but yeah, you can have food there. And he had worked out 
that uh, Gisborne has got a good RSA. So we all went to the RSA and we all sat around the table, sort of, you know, got your own food and had, had your food there. Yeah. So that yeah. was reasonable shape, you know, and it was just I mean, yeah. social, wasn't it? Yeah. It was good social things we had. But the social side of the band is just as important as the other side. Yeah. I like to see that somehow a little bit back too, especially when you get more young ones in to, yeah. to have a bit of more social because then they, you know, everybody, and we get annoyed sort of a little bit. Yeah. That's what I find going to a competition once in a while doesn't do you any harm because you learn to play together, isn't it? I mean, and, and you work towards something. You know, I mean, we had our big concert now, but now, now we have the, the competition. But if we have another competition next year, at least you work to all together for a special occasion and, and have the concerts in between, yeah. I only had one toilet, Joop, isn't it? And when I came in the band, there was only one toilet. When they, I, they had one little room at the back, and there was a curtain in front, and behind that, there was a toilet seat with a bucket underneath. And that is how you arrived. <laughs> That was 76. That, I that was, 76. was 76. And that and it was in the committee, and it comes in the minutes, you know, that one band member was assigned every week again. You know, he had emptied the bucket somewhere at the back, you know, and then it was ready for next week. And that bucket, that rusted through, because that had been from, the, from, for, from 46, from 54, but just before you arrived, they got a new system, and that worked with detergent in it. So the same bucket, same similar bucket, but you could put some detergent in, and that kept the smell away, and it, it, it was fine. And you only had to empty it when it was half full, so you didn't have to empty it every week anymore. But yeah, the curtain was still there, and when Sitzke came there, yeah, I don't really like to sit behind the curtain. I don't know who no, it is. No, and there was only one exactly toilet, and yeah. I, I wanted, because of a man and woman in the band, you know, but then why it was can't decided, we have two toilets? It was decided not to go ahead until at that stage Kerepehi got the, the sewage, you know, yeah, underground so sewage. And that, that arrived in late 70, 78, 79, and very quickly when the sewer came through, yeah, got uh, Rowan. He, he drew that, and uh, one of the neighbors helped there to put up the frame, but Rowan did, did a lot of work on it. Chris and me did there. That is when I first started you know, being on a working bee uh, once, and that's the only time I ever had trouble with Chris. And that is how much we knew about building. You know, you, you evolve. Weatherboard has got an, an, a tin side and a thicker side. Do you know that? It's and we agreed on, we disagreed on what goes to the top. Either the tin side or the, the, the and, and no, we were both hard-headed and baggered and we, we, <laughs> you know, we laughed about it later, but uh, yeah, that's how much we knew about building. Yeah, but we did it.